Hey guys, Bert here. Welcome again to Learning 3D. This is chapter 11. Today we're going to be talking about auto rotations. I know that uh, this has been covered many times in the past. Bobby did an episode on SMAC 101 that talks about auto rotations and the basics of auto rotations. We did an episode that focuses on nothing but auto rotations. But this time around, I'm going to talk about 3D autos, nothing more than 3D autos. We're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so talking about all kinds of 3D auto rotations. And I'm actually going to like give you some tips on how to be able to learn these auto rotations. Instead of just showing you how to do it, I'm going to actually walk you through them. So I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, one thing that I see a lot of people do right before they go and try to do 3D auto rotations is the fact that they run their blades too loose. And if you have the blades really, really loose, um, what could happen is as you're coming down on an uh, like aerobatic auto, say you slow the head speed too much and the blades begin to stop. Um, if you have to bail out the sudden jerk of the head, look at what happens. The, the head jerking um, around to get you restarted when you bail out a throttle hold can make a blade um, fold. And once the blades fold, you can easily hit the boom, very, very easily. And then at that point, it's over. Um, you're going to destroy the boom. The helicopter is just going to fall down to the ground like a brick. So before you try to do any kind of aerobatic auto or 3D auto, make sure your blades are pretty tight. Just carry your wrench to the flight line and just double check your blades. This is really, really important, believe it or not. I mean, I've, I've had it to where like it's a little bit on the loose side and I went out there and I've gotten away with murder many times, but it just only takes that one time when the blades are loose and you have to bail out and then it's game over. So that's one important thing. Now, I'm going to talk to you about three important tips that I consider sort of something that you need to keep in mind all the, at all times when you're going to try to do these 3D autos. Um, first of all, um, keep in mind that there's um, the, the wind factor. Um, as we've explained many times before during auto rotation episodes, you want to do your autos into the wind. But when you're doing aerobatic autos, things change a little bit. Um, for example, if you're coming straight down, um, you need to keep in mind that the wind might not necessarily matter at that point because you're creating lift by going down. If you're uh, doing like say for example a pure flipping auto on the way down, you're creating lift by means of helicopter weight. You really don't have to be going into the wind or away from the wind because you're going on a vertical descent almost perfectly straight down. So the wind in that case is not so that important. Um, and I'm going to talk about wind a little bit more as we start to do these auto rotations. Another thing that is very important to keep in mind is the pitch. In other words, pitch, think of pitch as the overall combined pitch throughout the blade, regardless of whether it is collective or cyclic. So for purposes of this episode, I'm going to refer to um, aileron and elevator inputs as cyclic inputs. Cyclic is pitch. In the same way that collective gives you positive pitch and negative pitch, the cyclic gives you positive pitch and negative pitch in different areas of the disc. And what I'm trying to say with this is that cyclic gives you lift in the same way that collective gives you lift. So you have to keep that in mind because it's very important. Every time you make any sudden cyclic changes, elevator or aileron, you have to be very careful because you're going to be try to induce a blade stop in, in a certain area of the disc if you're not smooth when you're doing a 3D auto. So I'm going to talk about that again as we start doing these autos and the last thing is the helicopter angle the angle of the helicopter is very important if your blades are really 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 slow almost to the point where they're about to stop which you will actually do that many times when you do aerobatic autos you want to make sure that your helicopter is as straight 
as possible, that your disc is as horizontal as possible. Whether it is right side up or upside down, it doesn't matter. You do want your disc to stay as horizontal as possible. And the slower the blades, the more careful you have to be with your inputs. You really don't want to do any sudden jerky movements with your cyclic if your blade speed is very, very low. Um, for example, if you're doing a just a plain old basic right side up forward auto and you're coming down to land, this angle is critical. Um, keep in mind, if you have a very strong wind, say coming this way towards the helicopter, you're going into the wind. If you drop the nose of the helicopter a little bit too much, you're feeding negative pitch simply because you need negative pitch to do a right side up auto. So what happens is as the wind starts to hit the rotor from the top of the disc, it's going to try to stop the rotor. So watch your angles. Make sure that you have the right angle at all times. The same with an upside down auto. If you're doing an auto rotation, you're coming upside down. Be careful with this angle. This is good. This is very good. This is kind of okay, but be careful with this because at this point, as you come down like this, you're feeding positive pitch. And if you have a very strong wind going into the helicopter and you go like this, that positive pitch is gonna induce a blade stop. So these are just a few basic things to keep in mind before you do the autos. Now we're gonna go ahead and fire this guy up and we're gonna take it for a spin and I'm gonna talk to you about the various types of 3D autos that you can come up with. Um, but before we do that, I'm gonna take it up and I'm gonna show you a trick that will give you a, a better feel for what to expect out of the helicopter as you start to slow the blades down. All right, I got my uh, Velocity 90 here ready to go and I really honestly recommend the Nitro Machine. Of course, if you wanna fly at Rach, that's great, but you don't have to, you can fly any Nitro Machine. Um, and the reason why I prefer Nitro is because you can go up and do autos and then come back down, you know, literally 50 times on a tank, uh, on a tank of fuel, whereas electric, eh, you might not have that many chances because every time you spool up and down, you actually lose some battery, uh, battery capacity. So anyway, I'm gonna go to my idle up one here. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go really high. Motor is really, really rich. The first thing I want you guys to practice is to go up really, really, really high. And then hit the hold. And then try to come back down with the least amount of pitch possible. In other words, try to slow down the helicopter. Like the most you can. Don't let the blade stop. But what you do is you start feeding a little bit of positive until you feel that the blades are getting really close to stopping and then you feet negative again let them spool back up there we go and then we're just gonna land let's just do that one more time very little energy there at the end as you can see we have like practically no wind right now so this is you have to be a little bit on the careful side when you do this with no wind at all but the goal here is just that you need to get acquainted with the behavior of the helicopter at very, very low head speed. And I think this is great help. As you can see now, the wind shifted and it's coming from the right. So we're going to do it at a little bit of a different angle. I'm going to take it a little bit more towards my left, like right about there. Get a little bit higher. So again, you start feeding a little bit of positive until you slow the, des slow the descent rate. And keep in mind, as long as the helicopter is descending, it's coming down, the blades are not going to stop. That's your key right there. If it stops in the air, the blades are going to stop. So you can see blades are almost to a stop there. This gives you a very good feel for what the helicopter does with the low head speed. See a little burst of negative. There we go. Now we build up our head speed again into hopefully a smooth landing. Not so quite but decent. So what that does once again is that gives you that kind of, it makes you comfortable with the way the helicopter behaves with really, really low head speed. And be careful with what you do with the cyclic. Like I said before, you don't want to be doing anything crazy with the cyclic. You want to be really, really smooth with your inputs at that point. Um, so as far as pitch, it's really hard to tell, but usually what I do when I do that is I go to the negative side because I was right side up, and then I start feeding pitch very, very slowly. I'm assuming that I'm probably at like minus one degree, maybe, maybe minus two. It really depends. It's really hard to tell, but the key here is that you need to be aware of how the helicopter behaves when the blades are slowing down. If you see that the blades are about to stop, just don't be afraid to just give it some burst of negative. The blades will spool back up. So we're going to try that just one last time here. We're going to do it upside down this time so same concept I'm just gonna go in here and go into my idle up I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna climb upside down motor is super rich all right and then I'm just going to hit my hold here in a second here we go 
positive pitch and now I'm going to start feeding a little negative, a little more negative. There we go. That's a sweet spot. You start to hear the blades almost want to crawl down to a stop. And then if you get concerned, give it a little burst of positive, then a little four elevator, let the helicopter flip. And as you can see, like I'm barely making these landings just simply because, again, there's no wind. If there was a strong wind or even, even a 10 mile hour wind, you could actually re-spool back up very, very quickly on the way down. So that's the first thing I would like for you guys to practice. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and do the good old-fashioned inverted auto. At this point, if you don't know how to fly inverted, I think you're wasting your time because you've watched 10 episodes or 10 chapters of learning 3D. I'm assuming you're comfortable with inverted flying left to right, right to left, and all orientations towards you away from you. So let's start with a basic inverted auto first. And with an inverted auto, what we're going to do is we're just basically going to climb upside down. It's really hard to tell what, what the wind is doing right now. It's very erratic. It's like it's, it's calm right now. So I'm going to go this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit hold and I'm going to go to the positive side of the pitch on the collective. I'm going to be very, very smooth with the cyclic. No cyclic changes. Here we go. Positive. And then when I'm ready to do my flip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to zero pitch, half a roll, and now negative side on the pitch. And that's it. That's the inverted, regular inverted auto. Um, so you can see that's really, really easy to do. Nothing to it. Um, so the next time what we're going to do is we're going to bring it a little bit lower and I'm going to have a little bit more forward speed. Remember, forward speed creates lift. There's two ways in which you can create lift here. You can create lift by going straight down using the proper pitch, whether positive or negative, or you can create lift by moving forward. So we're going to move forward upside down a little bit. Positive pitch. When I'm ready, zero pitch, half roll, negative pitch, down to a smooth landing. So as you can see by doing these sort of inverted autos, I'm really not changing my collective. I'm not playing with my collective. All I'm doing is coming upside down. I'm on the positive side of my collective. I move my collective to, collective to zero pitch. I do a half roll. Then I move my collective to the negative side and I come down like a normal auto. If I were to do this a little bit lower than I just did, if I wanted to do my roll much lower, then instead of doing this positive to zero to negative, then what I need to do is I need to actually give it a little bit of a burst to negative, just very little, to hold it and then do the roll and then transition back into negative again. So we're going to try that this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain a little bit of forward speed because again, forward speed creates lift. And the wind is kind of coming again from the right, so we're going to go to the left this time again. So watch this, I'm going to pick up quite a bit of speed and I'm going to let it come down, like I'm going to drag it upside down a little bit. A lot of speed, hold, a little bit on the negative side, hold it, half a roll to a landing. The landing is way out there, but it kind of portrays the, what I'm trying to show here. Do it one more time. I think I can do it from the right now because the wind, like I said, is too erratic. It's kind of cool when you don't know what the wind is doing. I guess that's a good sign that we have no wind today. All right, here we go. I'm going to come in from the right, pick up a little bit of speed, hit hold, positive pitch, let it drag a little bit, half a roll. And as you can see on my stick, the, the stick movement on that sort of auto is kind of different than from the first auto because, again, when you try to hold it upside down that low, you have to kind of start moving to the negative side ahead of time. Whereas when you're coming down, you have plenty of altitude, you really don't have to move to the negative side. You just move to the zero side and then you do your half roll and then you complete your landing. So. And of course, you can do this invert auto in all kinds of combinations. You can do it backwards, you can do it forward, you can do it all kinds of stuff. But because this is a learning 3D episode, we're going to try to keep it sort of abbreviated in a way and we're going to move on to our next auto, which will be just an auto where we're going to do a bunch of rolls. So the same concept applies here. The only difference is that we have to be careful with our, uh, our collective and our cyclic movements because if we screw up, we're going to slow down the blaze too much. So I'm going to be right side up and I'm going to hit the halt and I'm going to go to the negative side. And I'm going to go to zero and do a half roll. Go to the positive side, zero, half roll, negative side, zero, half roll, positive side, zero, half roll, negative. It's a little scary there at the end, but as you can see, I still have plenty of energy to bring the helicopter to a relatively smooth landing. 
So what I did there at the end is I did it a little push of elevator which, which kind of gave it a twist. But it's the same concept whether it is aileron or elevator as you're coming down it really doesn't matter. I personally think the aileron rolls are a little bit easier just because there's less mass to flip. So as you do an aileron roll, you need it, it's not as critical that you're so precise with your collective. When you do the elevator, you have to be a little bit more precise with the collective because there's a lot more mass to flip. So it takes a little bit longer, uh, in theory. Um, so we're going to do that one more time. And I'm not going to get creative this time. Let's do it the way it's supposed to be. I'm just going to do a couple of rolls on the way down. So right side up climb, hit the hold, negative pitch, zero, flip it into positive zero, flip it into negative, flip it into positive, and flip it into negative pitch again to a right side up finish, to an approach, and to a semi-smooth landing there. So practicing that helps drastically because the more you do these types of autos, the more comfortable you get with your collective and your cyclic inputs. And it really teaches you a lot about what the helicopter wants to do when it's power off. Because remember, your collective is backwards when you're doing autos. So you come down, you have to be negative if you're right side up, you have to be positive if you're upside down, you know that already. But that kind of teaches you that muscle memory that you need in order to make those corrections and those changes in your collective without thinking. Remember, you don't want to think about anything you do. You want it to be a natural reaction of your mind the same way you walk or run. So we're going to do one last one here before we move on to our next segment, which will be a little bit more advanced autos. And on this one, I'm going to do the same, but I'm just going to do like a, instead of doing like roll, I'm just going to do like a flip. Let's do like a flip or two. Let's see how many we can get, depending on how high I am and how comfortable I feel. But basically, same concept. Right side up climb, negative pitch, zero, back elevator, zero, back elevator, zero, back elevator. Okay, that's good, that's enough. 180 pirouette, into flipping right side up, into a smooth landing. That was a smooth landing. So these are sort of some important autos that you need to practice in the very beginning before you kind of try to step forward into the next sort of, I guess you could say, way more advanced autos. So remember, practice your collective positive, you know, transitioning from positive to negative and negative to positive as you're doing these flips or these rolls on the way down. And once you get really, really comfortable with that, you'll be able to do like inverted autos, like down on the deck where you literally almost let the tail drag the ground for like 20 feet and then pop it into a smooth landing. So let's get some more fuel, even though we have a little bit, we're going to get some more fuel and we're going to do another segment where we're going to talk about the real like hardcore or aerobatic autos. All right guys, the next step here is to do pirouettes on our way down. And the reason why I want you guys to practice pirouettes on the way down is because eventually this is gonna help you to do pirouetting flips, pirouetting flipping autos. So to practice this, let's do a simple auto where we're just gonna pirouette the helicopter all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead here, we're gonna climb, And then what I'm going to do is just do a normal auto. I'm going to hit the hold. I'm going to try to pirouette the helicopter all the way down. Now the key with the pirouette is keep in mind the pirouette robs your head speed, okay? It really does. That's good enough. And then we can land. Um, the pirouette robs your head speed by a lot because what's happening is you're now requiring another source of power. You need power to drive your tail. Um, if you use right tail, you're going to be robbing a little bit more power than if you use left tail, but nonetheless, the tail robs power regardless. So the goal here is when you do these pirouetting autos, right side up and upside down, it's just to get acquainted with how your collective needs to be adjusted for the rate of the pirouette. Generally, you want to keep the pirouette speed low. I mean, you can go really fast pirouette, but the faster the pirouette, the less pitch you have to add to the helicopter. Um, so. Um, I recommend that you get acquainted with it first by doing um, by doing very slow, very very slow pirouettes. So let's try one more here. And you don't have to pirouette it literally all the way down to the ground. You can just pirouette it 
and kind of stop when you're at a safe altitude, finish your approach or whatever. I'm gonna collect it here. Now I'm gonna go negative collective like I normally do and I'm gonna start a smooth pirouette. See, the more I pirouette, the more negative I kind of have to add to be able to maintain my head speed. I can stop my pirouette there and bring it to a landing. As you can see, I have like very little energy at the end. Right now, the wind is so erratic and it changes at higher altitude. We're kind of boxed in here by the trees. So I'm really confused as to what the wind is doing. I think it's kind of blowing in my face now, kind of like from the left. So I came with a tailwind. <laughs> Ironically enough, the time before I came in with a uh, tailwind, I think as well. You see, now the wind is coming from that side based on the smoke is going to the right. So we're gonna do an inverted one this time. So same deal, flip it upside down and then take it pretty high. I mean, it doesn't have to be like super high. You wanna be able to get a good visual on it, but positive pitch and start my pirouette, very slow pirouette, very slow pirouette. And then I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna finish my landing. Now, practice that many, many times. Much better landing now, I have plenty of energy. Practice that many times because again, that teaches you how your collective trades off for the amount of tail you're adding to the helicopter. Once you learn that, if you are comfortable with doing these rolls and these flips on the way down and these invert autos and you're comfortable with these pirouetting autos on the way down, then it's time for the pirouetting flipping auto. And for the pirouetting flipping auto, there's two things you gotta keep in mind. Number one, watch the, your tail speed. If your tail is too fast, again, that's gonna cause some issues. Because what happens with the pirouetting flipping auto is if your pirouette is too fast, your steering has to be really fast. And you don't wanna do that because steering fast means applying crazy amounts of pitch to the disc and that's gonna induce a blade stop or it's gonna slow down your blades. So number one, keep your pirouette speed relatively low. It doesn't have to be a crawling, crawling pirouette but it has to be kind of a happy medium like I was doing there, number one. Number two, pause. In between right side up and upside down angles, pause. Let the helicopter build its little bit of head speed and then do the next flip. And you continue with the pirouette throughout the whole auto, but what you do is you start your pirouette you go say for example upside down and then you do your first flip so you steer the stick until you get right side up and then you stop steering and you let it come down a little more because that builds up head speed again then you do a little steering and you change it and so forth so it's not really a continuous non-stop pirouetting flip it's a smooth pirou flip pirou flip pirou flip and so forth let's try one here So I'm going to climb upside down. I'm gonna start it upside down. So what I'm going to do, I think the wind's coming from the left still. So what I'm gonna do is when I hit hold, I'm gonna to go to the positive pitch and I'm gonna start pirouetting. Now I'm going to steer here and I'm on the negative side. Now I'm gonna steer here and I'm on the positive side. Steer here and I'm on the negative side. Now I'm gonna stop my pirouette. I'm gonna finish my auto. As you saw in that particular auto, um, basically I was pausing in between upside down and right side up. That is the key here. Again, you don't want to continue to steer, 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 because you're going to blade, stop the blades. You want that constant pirouette, you want to do a steer, so you flip it right side up or upside down, you want to pause for like a second, let those blades pick up speed if, you've, if they're losing some, and then do another bit of steer to flip it again and so forth. So that's basically in essence in pirouetting, pirouetting flipping auto. Another interesting auto is the TikToking auto. And as I showed you before when we were doing the, the tumbles on the way down, that kind of shows you exactly what the collective needs to be. Um, on the TikToking auto, basically you never let the helicopter flatten all the way. What you do is you pick up about, uh, I would say like a 45 to 60 degree angle, somewhere in there, and then you move forward elevator, and then you go to the negative side, and then you transition to zero and positive, zero and negative. So it's the complete opposite of doing a normal TikTok where you would be on the positive side here, on the negative side here. Here you want to be on the positive here and on the negative here. And as you do these TikToking autos, be careful. One tip, you don't want to use very fast TikTok. It has to be very slow, very smooth, because if you go fast and you get carried away with the cyclic, you're going to stop the blades. Same case scenario here. Again, all these movements on the collective and the cyclic need to be very smooth. So we're going to try the, the TikToking auto and uh, one thing that you got to keep in mind again on this one is the wind. You don't want to do it into the wind, you don't want to do it with the tailwind. In other words, you want the disc, you want the wind to hit the disc sideways. 
So for example, so you can see here the one is kind of coming, let's see which way, it's going to the right. Yep, it's going left to right. So I want to be at this angle kind of when I do my pirouetting, my uh, correction, my tick-tocking auto. If the wind was going away from me, I would want to be in this position. It, it's really not all that critical if the wind is not very strong, but as the wind gets stronger and stronger, you have to be careful because if you are facing the wind or away from the wind, you're going to stop the blades. I'm gonna try it at about this angle right here. I think this should be a decent angle for this wind. I'm gonna go upside down first. I'm gonna go to positive side. Transition to negative. Positive. Negative. Positive. Negative. Positive. And then I'm gonna do a half, a 180 pirouette into a final approach into a landing. And as you saw in my stick movements, it's a no-brainer. It's not really all that slow but it can be too fast. You just have to find a happy medium. And again, the wind, for example, like I said, if the wind is coming this way towards me, if I do it this way, every time I go push over that way, I'm gonna be slowing the disc. If, the, if, if I do it like this and the wind's coming that way, every time I go that way, I'm gonna be slowing the disc. So you, if the wind is coming from there, you ideally, ideally you wanna do it this way because that maintains, preserves head speed. Again, that is not that critical if it's a five mile an hour wind or whatever, it doesn't matter. But if it's a 20 mile an hour wind, be careful with the, with the tick-tocking autos. So to wrap this up, we're gonna do just a mixed, couple of mixed uh, auto rotations here. I'm gonna start with a couple of TikToks and a couple of pirouette flips on this first one. Of course, the more stuff you wanna do on your auto, the higher you need to be. I'm not gonna go too high because I'm not gonna do a lot of stuff on the way down. Let's see if I can do two TikToks and two, one or two pirouette flips or maybe two half pirouette flips. Let's see. So hit hold, TikTok. Another tick-tock, another tick-tock, pirouetting, to right side up, pirouetting, to upside down. That's it. That was a, about two half tick-tocks and two half pirouette flips, or one complete pirouette flip. Um, and you can start mixing these up. You could do like a half roll, pirouetting tick-tock to pirouetting flip. Or if you're really, really high, you can get creative and do all those things and then let it come in pretty low because you, you can build energy and then pop it at the last second or whatever. We'll do one more here. Let's see what I can do here. Let's do a... Uh, there's so many different things you can do. Um, you can get creative and do all kinds of stuff. Let me go all the way to the left. Let's see what I can do here. Let me just come up here and I just fly really fast and whole ass. I'm gonna whole ass that way. And I'm gonna hit the hole like right about here. And I'm gonna flip it again here. That was a very lame, that was a very lame auto. But as you can see, I mean, if you start getting creative, you can just hit the hold on an knife edge angle and then flip it and then roll it. I mean, it's all about getting, that's why it's so important that you follow my advice when it comes to doing those slow blade autos, because that gives you that good feel for how much energy you have on the helicopter. So let's do just, uh, just so you can see my stick movements. I'm gonna do one more pirouetting flipping auto, because I know a lot of you guys wanna learn that. And I'm gonna slow it down in uh, editing room. I'm gonna put it in slow motion so you guys can see my stick movements.
end of slow motion. And then finally, let's do a couple of flips, a couple of rolls, and then we'll stall it at the end and hold it, hold it, hold it until a landing. All right, let's do a throttle hold. Have TikTok, another TikTok, into a roll, into a flip, into a half pair of flip, into a half roll, and then we'll hold it for a second here. It's about as much as I can hold it. Bill head speed up again, into a smooth landing. So I hope, uh, even though this was sort of a limited demonstration, I hope this was very helpful when it comes to teaching you what it takes to develop your skills and learn how to use your collective and your cyclic and how to take advantage of the wind doing these 3D autos. Hopefully within the next few weeks or months you'll be able to do these TikToking autos, these inverted autos, the pirouetting autos, as well as the flips and rolls and belling out at the last minute and all kinds of stuff. So that concludes chapter number 11 for learning 3d thanks for watching guys see you later